What's going on, YouTube? Um, so I just saw this picture on the internet. And after seeing that sketchiness, um, I don't know if I'm about to stock Atlantis coils. So I'm going to show you how to rebuild one with standard cotton wicking. Keep that silica out of your uh, lungs and body in general. Ugh. Let's uh, dive down and look at it. All right, so let's build this uh, Atlantis coil quick. Um, I'm kind of an asshole, but I'm going to be building a spaced Clapton coil here uh, just for <laughs> this Atlantis build here. It's gonna be sick. Um, so, basically, just gonna make it um, a little bit spaced like the stock Atlantis coils are. And then, just like that. Sorry, you can't see it too well yet. I'll show you in a second. Hopefully you can see that. And let's see, we'll do it at six wraps. So that and six. We'll push it in just a little bit. Just like that. That should fit pretty well in that really big Atlantis head. Okay, I'm just gonna fire this a little bit. That should be good for now. Now let's uh, put this into the coil head. Okay, so here we have an Atlantis coil head. Um, so this has a coil in it already. Let's pull that out. How you do that, you just uh, pull out the, the little airflow stop here. That little piece comes out. And then you have this rubber gasket. You want to take that out as well. Make sure to keep all of these because they're all very important. Okay. Now, this coil that's already in here, let's take something. And either push it out or pull it out just like that. Okay, so now we have an empty Atlantis coil head. Now, what you want to do, you want to take your coil, and the way we're going to wick this, we're going to wrap the wicking material around the coil first, almost similar to a dragon coil except um, the airflow will go through the bottom of the coil. Okay, so take your coil and take your wicking material. Make sure not to use too much wicking. I've found that if you use too much, it'll get all uh, gunked up and just not work correctly. Um, I might even have too much here, but let's see. Okay, so just... Wrap it up in this cotton. Now you've got a wicked coil right here. So I'm going to put this back onto the uh, piece that I used 
to wrap it so I can install it more easily. Um, also, you can, uh, I don't know if you can see that. See how the uh, wick is blocking the hole there? Push that right through and you can solve that problem easily enough. Okay. So before we install this, I'm gonna take this off the jig. Before you install this, you wanna take the longer of your two leads and just fold it down. That's going to be your negative lead and that's gonna be on the outside of that rubber gasket. Um, the other lead, you can just bend down a little as well and that's going to be your positive. Um, it's very important that you know which one is which uh, due to the way this this coil head here is designed. Um, okay, so now just going to take both sides of this coil here and mount it in place. Again, making sure to keep in mind which is the negative and which is the positive lead. Alrighty, now we have that installed. We're going to take that rubber grommet and slide it over the positive connection so it's inside, inside the rubber grommet and the negative lead is outside. Again, I can't, I can't stress how important this is. Otherwise, your atomizer will not work correctly and will probably, I imagine it would short out, um, which is not a good time. Okay, you get that, that grommet installed, just like that. And now, finally, if you uh, built it with uh, whatever you wrapped your coil around in place in the atomizer there, it is now time to pull that out. Okay, and now what you want to do, you just take, let me clip these leads quick, actually. Okay, so now my leads are all clipped here. It's nice and clean looking. Um, so let's install this final piece here. It's the, uh, the airflow. Okay, so what you want to do, just uh, pinch that positive lead against the side of the rubber grommet with this piece here. And that will make a connection. Okay. There we go. That is now in place on there. And we're ready to put this in the Atlantis. Okay, so I installed the uh, coil into the base here and bam 0 0.49 even though that's backwards on this camera sorry um, so about the same as a stock Atlantis coil um, now we're gonna put some juice on it get it going so first thing you want to do before anything else um, you want to Get yourself some juice. I gotta get myself a dripper bottle here. Hold on. Okay. I got myself some uh, diacetyl milk. So let's prime this coil quick. Just a little bit so it soaks up the wick. It can do this um, once it's in the tank. You take some primer puffs, but um, it's always better to just have it 
give it a little bit of a head start. Okay, so I got my Atlantis tank here now. I'm going to fill that up. All right, so wham. Okay. Almost there. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll put this down here. And let's put this together now. Okay. Screw on your base to the top here. All the way down. And then make sure Let's see if I can see it on the screen here. Make sure that little uh, half circle there is open. Make sure the teeth aren't blocking that because that's your, that's your juice channel. That's very important that it's uh, aligned the correct way. If not, you're going to have potential wicking problems. Okay, and then what you wanna do Take it to the uh, smallest airflow setting and just take a couple of primer puffs till you see bubbles start to come out of those juice, juice uh, channels there. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see here. No, don't see any bubbles, but Bubbles will come up and fill the tank area. Okay. So obviously the question now is, how does she vape? Let's find out. Pretty good, pretty good. Um, the performance is, the vapor production is similar to that of the stock coils, maybe a little bit more. But really, with this Clapton coil that I put in there, um, it's all about the flavor. The uh, stock Atlantis coils, they have a little bit of a, a muting to the flavor to them. With this Clapton coil in here, it gets much closer to the performance of um, like a, a standard RDA or your more cloud chasing tanks like the orchids or, uh, you know, it doesn't quite approach the flavor of the K-Fun, but it's still, <laughs> it's still a two, two mil tank of near RDA quality and the flavor has jumped up incredibly with the new coil. The uh, airflow, the way I uh, put it in here, it's a little more restrictive, but because of the, uh, the coil in there, you can pull it for longer. So they kind of balance each other out, you know. Just uh, little things, you can do whatever you want in your rebuilt coil. Uh, if you use 22 gauge or 24 gauge, I found that both of those work incredibly well. And if you use 22 gauge, you can get much more vapor production because you can build them to 0 0.4, 0 0.35, 0 0.3. Uh, I've even had one of my coworkers here uh, build a 0.25 Atlantis coil and the vapor production on that is insane. So, rebuilt Atlantis coils. It's, uh, it's a pretty word, if you ask me.